Hi, welcome all to uh, the second breakout session about the service providers. Thanks for joining in. My name is Jan Romandos and I work as a mobility consultant uh, at Technolution. I will be the moderator for this breakout session. In this session, representatives of the four service providers, B-Mobile, Brandmakers, BMW, and TomTom, will talk about their services and their experiences within Socrates. If you have any questions, please put them in the chat. And if there's any time at the end, we will answer them. Next slide, please. So here you see Socrates divided over the four pilot sites in Amsterdam, Antwerp, uh, Copenhagen, and Munich. Um, we have different use cases in different cities, uh, smart destination, network optimization, roadworks information, lane information, and environmental zone. And the pilot sites were live uh, during uh, November 2019 until uh, December 2020. And we managed to reach 50,000 Socrates users. So there are people that have actively used the service of one of the service providers uh, with 800 evaluation users. Evaluation user means that they have used the service and also uh, responded via a survey, for example. Um, right now, I'll give uh, the word over to uh, Rina from BMW so she can talk about what the experience for BMW was. Yeah, thank you, Jan, for this first um, overview. So my name is Irina Kolomatschke, representing BMW. And I will give you now a more deep dive to the different services um, we have piloted in um, Socrates. So I will start with the smart tunnel drive in Antwerp. And um, the intention of this service was to create a win-win-win situation. That means that there's a win for the public road authority, a win for the um, service provider, as BMW, and a win for the end user. And as you can see on the map on the left hand side, um, there is the ring road um, of Antwerp. And this ring road has two river crossings. In the south, there's the Kennedy tunnel that is very often crowded. And in the north, the Liefkensuk tunnel. And this tunnel um, has a toll on it. So these are um, around five or six euro per drive through. And the intention of this use case and the intention of the road authority was to spread the traffic um, more from the Kennedy tunnel towards the Liefkensuk tunnel. But not in, in general, but um, especially in these moments where um, before a traffic jam really occurs in the, the Kennedy Tunnel, so um, um, and, and to make it attractive to, to switch to the Liefkensuk Tunnel in the north. So there was also an incentive um, by adherence. And this offer from the road authority was not provided um, by themselves via um, road signs, for example, but this was offered by a service provider by BMW in this case. So um, in moments where the, the traffic management center um, sees that the traffic load will increase on the Kennedy tunnel, they gave us a hint, they gave us a um, service request that we should um, switch traffic from the Kennedy tunnel to the Liefkensuk tunnel. So, and when we received this um, service request, we uh, looked where our users are at this moment and if they are in this, what we call a trigger zone. So these are the specific geofence areas on the ring road. And if a user is driving in this um, trigger zone and we, if we um, um, see that it would make sense to him to switch, we offer him via an Inca pop-up screen um, this, um, um, this question whether he wants to switch to the alternative route via the Liefkensuk tunnel. The user can then um, choose whether he wants to accept or not. And if he accepts, um, um, some um, other uh, um, pop-ups will follow and we will guide him towards the Liefkensuk tunnel. And, um, in parallel, we send uh, him or her a uh, uh, QR code voucher on his, on his or her mobile phone so um, that the user can 
pass, when he really comes to the Lifkin subtunnel and shows this QR code, then he can pass through um, and has a kind of a seamless journey. So um, then I come to the, the results of what we experienced uh, by BMW. Um, so the main results is that um, all the users that give us an, um, feedback, they really like the service. There had been no issues in, in the usability. And um, we, in, in, in total, we, um, um, we observed around 40,000 routes of the drivers, but of, of course, only um, in specific moments um, when there had been this trigger zones, we they provide them this um, service. And this was only in 1% of um, the, the roles. So of course, this is a very specific service, but when the user get um, accepted the service, then he really followed it in 50%. So, um, so we can see that there's a, a quite high percentage of users who was, want really to follow this advice. And in parallel, we had also a survey uh, where we specifically asked the users about the general intention of what they want to get out from can, such a service. And what you can see in this chart um, on, um, shown here is that in general, the users of course want to have a, um, a fast route. They want to get an, an, an incentive, though this is um, the most stated motivation, but also 60% stated, yeah, they want really to follow our city cooperative detour. So uh, they are also willing really to, to switch to an alternative, even if it's not really the, uh, the fastest uh, route. And um, in addition to that, we also see, this is what um, stated in the right chart, is that um, most of the, our uh, users we asked, they really believe in the, uh, that BMW provides um, him or her a, a beneficial alternative. So, um, but they only trust the public authority in 11% to pro provide the most beneficial route. So this gives us um, a hint so that the, the user will be, believe a lot in the private services, in the BMW services. And um, we would say, especially this cooperation we've, uh, we made in Socrates between the public and the private give, give a chance for the uh, public to provide also their goal, their intention via this uh, service provider, via BMW, in a very uh, individually and dif differentiated way towards the user. So this can, all of them can profit from them. So this is the win-win-win aspect. And um, we also give a, um, why a feedback loop our um, 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 an overview of our users back to, to the service providers so that they have a kind of an aggregated overview of what's going on. So in, in the service, um, it worked very well. And, but of course we had a um, specific format to exchange this data. So this is not um, immediately scalable for other cities, but um, we, we can, uh, could, prove that this kind of co uh, collaboration worked fine. Next slide, please. <clears throat> now I also want to give you a short overview of the other um, use case we piloted. This is the smart destination service in Munich. Next slide, please. And uh, these smart destination use cases um, wants to give the users who wants to drive to a specific event location, for example, the trade fair, the Messe München in, in Munich, um, a specific guidance um, of the preferred route coming from the road authority, but not ending at the exit of the, the highway, but also uh, with the specific guidance toward the right parking lot. Unfortunately, we could not really um, pilot this with real end users due to the um, COVID-19 crisis. So there, um, of course, they had no taking place any trade fair last year. So we had only the chance to pilot this with some friendly users. 
So, but we have uh, one slide back, please. Um, so what, uh, what, what we um, found in Socrates is that the Bavarian Road Authority together with the Messemünchen, they um, had um, um, made their strate strategies available via digital way. So it's not that they only sitting together in the traffic management center, but they had a combined strategy that was um, <clears throat> communicated via the German access point, the MDM, towards the service provider. So for, for us, for BMW, we only had to go to the MDM and um, we can get from there the strategies how we can um, provide our users the best way to which road to use, but also which parking place to, um, to choose at the trade fair. So next slide, please. So the pilot results for Munich are that um, this, um, called this specific guidance towards a parking lot is an, and it's a, only a, a, um, one part of the navigation, but we, could, we see it as a kind of a quality. So this could um, in, in improve the quality of the overall navigation system. And, um, it, it makes it more um, useful if we have this specific cause in it. So if we know why to choose which strategy that we can interpret it. So in, in this use case, we really use standard uh, communication protocols um, like this uh, MDM DATEX2 protocol and um, communicate via these existing access points. So this is really a good base also for scaling, so that we uh, this is an easier way how others can, as a service providers, or even uh, we in other cities can use, um, could do the service in the same way. But in general, um, our main learnings from um, Socrates are that um, this cooperation between the public and the private and these kind of new, new roles um, that we are the one who sends out the specific um, information that is coming from the public, work very well, and that we can really um, um, give the public road authority um, or the advantage for the public road authority because we can target and address our users more specifically and more individual, but even with the, also their goals. But of course, there's still existing some issues about standardization, georeferencing, that hinders a bit the scaling and also the business model we have to found in details. But we did, a, um, I think, a good step within Socrates, but there's still some issues we have um, um, to take up in following projects. So this was it from the BMW perspective. Now I give the words to to Isaac from B-Mobile. Yes, thank you, Irina. Uh, so my name is Isaac Ipperman, representing B-Mobile. Uh, and B-Mobile uh, has provided several services in various pilot cities uh, in the Socrates project. Uh, but today I will focus on two services. Next slide, please. The first one is the smart tunnel service in Antwerp. So this is uh, the, the same use case that Irina of BMW just talked about. Uh, however, we do have a different implementation uh, and a different result, uh, which I will show you. Uh, so the objective of this use case uh, was to shift traffic from the Kennedy Tunnel in the south. Uh, and this Kennedy Tunnel is, is, this is the number one bottleneck in Belgium. It's, oversaturated uh, many, many times. So the objective is to uh, shift some traffic from this candy tunnel in the south towards the leaf tunnel in the north to have a better distribution of traffic over the two tunnels. Um, there is a network manager who is uh, constantly checking traffic conditions. Uh, and when the traffic conditions ask for it, this network manager uh, sends us a service request. He asks us, please shift some traffic from the south to the north. Uh, OK, so how can we accommodate such requests? How can we uh, contribute uh, to the objectives here? Uh, 
as a private service provider. Next slide, please. Uh, we do this with our Flitzmeister application. Flitzmeister uh, is a popular app. It has uh, more than 2 million users in the Benelux. Right? It's a navigation app. Uh, so we provide routing advice in the Flitzmeister app. Uh, and when we see a route that is going via the Kennedy tunnel, and the blue route here in the first screen before you is an example of that, uh, then we will also check the alternative route using the Liefkensuch tunnel. This is the route in light gray, uh, also on this first screen. And uh, if it appears that travel time on this alternative route is, uh, is, is, is lower, or at least not much higher, than travel time on the original blue route, then we will provide this information to the traveler and we will present the traveler the option to take this alternative route. That's what you see in the second screen. Uh, there you have the question, are you interested in taking uh, this alternative route? And you can do that free of charge without paying at all. When the traveler accepts that, we will send him a voucher containing a QR code that he can use uh, to pass leave consult tunnel for free. And so by, by working with these vouchers, we provide incentives to the travelers to use these alternative routes. Uh, and by doing that, we are able to shift some traffic from the south Kennedy tunnel towards the north, the leave consult tunnel. Okay, some results uh, of the service. Next slide, please. Yes, um, we were able to, uh, to attract 8,000 unique users to this service. Uh, and the impact rate of the service appeared to be 47%. And so uh, this impact rate depends on uh, how much uh, in, or in how many cases that we offer uh, an alternative route, also in how many cases that a user accepts this alternative route, and then in how many cases that the traveler also really follows this alternative route. And if we multiply all those uh, probabilities, then we get an, a total impact rate of 47%, which means that uh, of all people uh, who could have been shifted, uh, we were able to shift 47% of them in reality. Uh, that's, a, that's a big number. Right? So we conclude that, the, uh, that we can generate a big impact uh, on the set objective with our Flitzmeister service. Um, we also conclude that we were able to provide a new means of communication, a new communication channel uh, that can support the traffic management uh, strategy of a road authority. Uh, and we were able to target specific individual travelers. Uh, in this case, uh, we, we targeted the travelers, only the travelers that had an, or, an original route via the Kennedy tunnel. And only for them, we provide this uh, toll-free voucher. Uh, and by doing that, we can make this measure very cost-effective. OK, next slide, please, is the second service uh, that I want to say a few words on uh, today. The network optimization service in Amsterdam. You see here the, the traffic network that you consider in this use case in Amsterdam. Uh, and here, the objective is uh, typically to shift some travelers away from network links that are foreseen to become congested uh, in the next period, in the next 30 minutes or so. Uh, so we want to avoid congestion as long as possible. How can we help with that as a private service provider? So also here, there's a network manager who is constantly evaluating uh, and checking uh, what links uh, are likely to become problematic uh, and where congestion is likely to set in. Uh, and based on that analysis, this network man manager will send us a request to shift some traffic away from certain network links. Yeah? So it ask us, please remove some traffic, shift some traffic away, for example, from links A, B, and C. Next slide, please. Um, and how uh, do we do that? Uh, or how can we help with this request? Uh, so again, with our Flitzmeister app, we provide routing advice. 
whenever we see a route that is going over one of the links to be avoided, uh, for example, the, the, the red link here in the first screen, yeah, that is one of the links that was to be avoided, then we will check uh, in our routing engine if we can find an alternative route where travel time is not too much longer compared to the original route. If we find such routes, we will inform the traveler about this and we will present him the option to take this alternative route. However, uh, for the traveler, it is typically not in his best interest to take this alternative route yeah? because it's, it's typically a little bit longer in travel time compared to the original route. But it may be or it will be uh, better for the global optimum. Uh, so, how can we convince such travelers to take these routes that are not in their best interest? Well, we can try to do that using incentives. What we do is we offer points. Uh, so, travelers, they can get points if they follow up advices. Um, and when they have enough points, they can get a free subscription to the paying Flitzmeister application. That is the incentive that we used here. Uh, and by giving such incentives, uh, we try to, to compensate travelers, let's say, uh, for, uh, for taking alternatives that are not in their best interests, but that are beneficial uh, for the common good, for the global optimum. Okay, some results here on the next slide. Uh, 6,000 users made use of this service. And the impact rate, the mean impact rate was 38% in this case. So again, uh, big impact. We were able to shift away quite some travelers. Um, uh, and then, yeah, again, we, we, uh, we have this new communication channel uh, where we can target specific individual travelers. And travelers, they have, we, so, so we kind of provide the option to travelers uh, to contribute to the set common objectives. They don't have to do so, we don't oblige them to do so, but we offer them the opportunity to do so. Um, so they are never worse off compared to uh, the original situation. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, these are the main learnings uh, that we have here. Uh, we state that the end user services show high potential to generate real impact in the common goals. And we, we can really uh, contribute uh, to the set objectives of shifting this traffic uh, away from certain links. The developed framework in Socrates for public-private cooperation allows for win-win-win, uh, a win for the public authority because private service providers, they, they contribute and they will help the public uh, reaching their, their goals. There's also a win for the user. They are better informed. They have more options, but they can still do what they want. And there can also be a win for private service providers, at least uh, if they find the right business model. And this business model um, is, is a really important aspect. Uh, we, we think that service providers, uh, so it's clear that they can generate substantial impact uh, on the set objectives. Uh, and we also believe that they can be rewarded somehow uh, to, to realize this impact. Uh, but the question remains, uh, how much is that really worth? Uh, we call this impact-driven business models, uh, where service providers are rewarded for the impact that they generate on common objectives. But the viability of those uh, impact-driven business models is still to be, uh, to be further investigated uh, maybe in, in a follow-up project. Okay, uh, so that's uh, my story for today. And then I pass the word to Alexander of TomTom. Thanks, Isaac, and hello, everybody. Um, I'm Alex Kroller, working for TomTom, and you probably know us as a navigation uh, provider. So we bring our services um, both into end user products like smartphone apps, but also directly into vehicles in the form of in-dash navigation. And so we joined Socrates um, and these studies here with the intent of finding out um, 
how well that would actually work if we put it into production, um, how good that is from the perspective of a potential product or service that can be offered to drivers. Um, and we use then, of course, all of the experiments that we're running in the project to try to generate some data for that. Could you show the next slide, please? So I want to mostly focus in the next couple of minutes on um, the Amsterdam use case with network optimization. That's the same one that Isaac was just talking about. Um, but we started with a survey on st to understand stated preference. So um, um, leveraging a large base of um, users and invited them to, to participate in a study where we um, provided them with all kinds of scenarios um, that fall under traffic management. And where we asked them, if you, if you would see this, what would you do, right? And um, this is all to find out whether users would appreciate a service like this if they encounter it in the field, right? So for example, um, what could be is that uh, you're offered with the alternative, the driving home um, on a certain route, uh, but there is a risk that uh, congestion is going to, is rising there. And how about taking a detour that's a couple of minutes longer, but of course um, serves a greater good of uh, alleviating congestion there. And what we found out with this study was um, maybe a bit surprising for me, but um, it was very positive, right? It was overwhelmingly positive. Um, on a scale of one to 10, people told us that they would give this kind of service more than an eight, right? So that's really, really positive. And they, they did not so much um, care about um, the details about what is being presented. They actually loved what they saw and the fact that they got and a choice that they got these kind of offers and they had a chance to react to it. Of course, if you were not only asking about um, whether people want to see this kind of offers, but whether they would actually take it, um, that is a little bit more of a uh, difficult uh, question. And it is, shouldn't surprise anybody, um, of course, tied to personal benefits. So you can reach, of course, higher acceptance numbers if the offers that you're making also has some benefit to the driver. For example, not being in a congested situation or being a stop and go because it's just more tedious to drive. Um, but generally, right, so the, the insights from that preference um, study was a very positive um, response by the users. We then focused on this um, mentioned pilot in Amsterdam, right? So where there is a couple of roads around the city where the uh, traffic authorities could trigger a response, shifting traffic from one concerned area to another. Um, we implemented that end to end in one of our end user apps. In this case, it was the Amigo um, smartphone app that uh, drivers could download, um, put on their smartphone, and then put to the dashboard. Um, we figured out in these kind of experiments that um, these kind of services actually work. So um, in the sense of the data was coming in a timely manner and we could process it, it was actually easy to align on um, in what formats is this going to be, um, how is it making its way onto the screen, and how is it presented to the user. So in terms of end-to-end -end feasibility, I think we established in this project that it, it just works, right? So there is no major obstacles there anymore. We got positive user feedback. They liked it. They liked the way they see it. We presented it to users always as an alternative, giving them a chance to respond or not respond. Um, what we did not do so much is, um, unfortunately, when, when this pilot was supposed to happen in the city of Amsterdam and when we were trying to help people um, get rid of traffic jams. Um, COVID-19 had a major impact on traffic in the Amsterdam area, and there were pretty much no traffic jams anymore that we could uh, work with. And so um, due to that, uh, we had a very low number of participants and did not do effectiveness analysis that would have just not made any sense with the numbers. And we are delaying that into future projects. Then what we also did is, of course, we looked at the kind of data that we got in, right? So as a data company, of course, any data that enters um, uh, enters our systems is being analyzed for quality, and this is no difference. And we tried to figure out, right, so how much sense does it actually make to take this kind of data? And turned out, um, right, so um, what we did is every time we got uh, one of these requests, we tried to understand, is this really different from what we would be doing anyhow, right? So we pride ourselves in being really good in predicting traffic 
and providing drivers with the best route for the individual driver. Um, and of course, there was a certain risk that um, that the routes that the traffic management, um, that the traffic authorities would send us would be just the same that we are computing ourselves. In that case, this would not work um, because it wouldn't add anything anymore. But that wasn't the case, right? So it's really the, the case that the individual routes are different from what the traffic authorities would like to see uh, in their interventions. So there's definitely a chance to make a difference by taking in this kind of advice. Next slide, please. With all these learnings, we then went into a analysis more from a product perspective, looking into um, the four big risks into um, whether or not this is something that's valuable to be added into our products. And we had a couple of findings there and I would quickly go through. So first one is in terms of value, there we don't see any obstacles anymore, right? So there's clear positive feedback. Users want to see this. Um, of course, the objectives of a traffic management authority are, are not always perfectly aligned with interests of the driver, but that's not a problem because drivers actually want to see these kind of things and they like um, getting these options. In terms of usability, also, absolutely no problem whatsoever. The services are easy to understand. Drivers know what they're doing. Drivers understand the kind of trade-offs that they are making when they enter these kind of uh, um, alternatives. And even though we did not focus um, so much on the user experience, it is sufficiently clear that there is no obstacle there anymore. Feasibility was the next one. Um, turned out that, of course, the roles that we defined in Zucatas with what role plays the traffic authority, what role plays the network manager, how do we get the data, how is this presented to us, what is the data formats, was all working extremely well. Um, we find that um, technical feasibility is no problem. These systems can be built. What we found as a maybe a little bit of a um, point of attention is, of course, that if the use cases start to get too fragmented because all cities, every individual city wants to have a different form of traffic management, that would not work for us as a global company. So we are really focused on finding unifying use cases that work everywhere. Um, but all in all, feasibility is fine. Um, where we see, and that um, I think was also mentioned before, I think the main, most important attention point for the future is viability or business viability. This is an investment, right? And despite users liking it, somehow this investment needs to be um, paid from somewhere. And it's not 100% clear right now how that uh, would work out. It might be in the future that the societal shift and the fact that um, drivers are demanding these kind of services um, will help there. Maybe also investments in the digital infrastructure um, might help it. That cannot be seen right now, but it will be for us definitely a point to watch out for. Next slide, please. So to summarize, main learnings um, that we had as TomTom -Tom in this project. First, traffic management, uh, the way we describe it here can enable valuable end user services that drivers will really like. And that's a very positive news that we got out of the project. Also, we found that uh, the way um, this was set up in Zocatez with the different roles, with the data architecture, this works. It enables a collaboration and this win 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 um, that is often talked about is really there. And of course, right, as just said, um, future attention should be on scalability and viability. Um, and that is where we will be heading next. With that said, I would like to head over then to um, brand makers and Art to um, give his perspective. Thank you, Alexander. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Art Veitsma, representing brand makers. Uh, we participated in Sogotes as a service provider. And I will start by telling you something about our goal, goals and then elaborate on our approach in the Socrates project. Uh, next slide, please. So traditional traffic management has its limitations, whether it's the roadside systems or the data that come out of it or organizations that use them. Uh, in many regions in Europe, uh, traffic management is expensive and inefficient and ineffective. So for brand makers, it was clear that when we joined Socrates 2.0, traffic management 2.0 could make a difference and could be a step in the right direction, a green, safe, and fast traffic system. Brand makers decided to focus on the user. 
in the end, it's the road users that make or don't make the difference. So bread makers set out to make online and social media part of the smart mobility toolbox. It's important to realize that brand makers does not work with our own dedicated app and we do not have an already existing user base. Rather, we use social media and we form communities on communities of users on a per event base. Uh, in Socrates, we participated in Amsterdam, Antwerp, Munich and Copenhagen in the use cases ONTF uh, and Smart Destination. And a more or less standard approach became clear, uh, each with its own challenges, of course, but always with focus on the user and the use of online and social media, such as Google, Facebook and WhatsApp. In a nutshell, the brand makes approach is about getting the best advice to relevant individuals via trusted channels. Uh, yeah, please, thanks. In the next three slides, I will elaborate a bit further on, uh, on the brand makers approach. So brand makers focuses on the user. Yeah, we want to provide the best advice to relevant individuals via trusted channels. Um, regarding this best advice, um, it's important to realize that in Socrates 2.0, brand makers did not generate or make uh, our own advice. Rather, we, receive, uh, we received the requested advice, the so-called service requests, from a road authority or network manager. Um, we would receive this in our live crowd service backend using protocols such as Datex2 or Diffium Exchange. And then, depending on the use case, we immediately would send through the message to our users, or we would first perform an internal live crowd assessment of the incoming service request. Uh, and for this assessment, we, uh, we've used specific tools, such as a viewer with uh, relevant KPIs. Next slide, please. And then the relevant individuals. A user is an individual, yet an individual is not per se a user. Elementary in the brand makers approach is to first identify the target group and then uh, reach out to them with an invitation to participate and thus forming communities of relevant users of our service. Identifying the target group can be done in several ways. In some occasions, brand makers make use of geofences. For example, in Amsterdam, we uh, specifically search for road users of the surrounding Amsterdam road network. So we placed geofences fences on strategic locations and with this technique we were able to identify several hundreds of thousands unique road users with characteristics such as um, above 18 years uh, repeating presence on the network uh, all in different languages so um, yeah once we have a selection of potential users we then start a uh, online recruitment campaign on social media to get into contact and form a group of Socrates users. Um, for these online campaigns, the format and the form of the message are key factors for a successful outcome. Next slide, please. So now that you know, we have the best advice and we have um, the relevant uh, group of uh, and the group of relevant individuals. It's time to combine this and get results. Yet, best advice and a relevant group of individuals still is nothing if you don't have um, the time and attention and the trust of each of those individuals. In the brand makers experience, the way to people's time and attention, and above all, uh, to their trust, leads via the communication channels that these potential users prefer to use. Uh, think of Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Snapchat, Instagram, TikTok, uh, just to mention a few. So it's important um, to repeat, brand makers does not work with our own dedicated app and we do not have an already existing user base. In Socrates, uh, brand makers used Facebook, WhatsApp, Google, Google Maps and text message. So after receiving the service request and after assessing it, we sent a Google Maps link to our users in WhatsApp 
um, which could be pre-trip or on-trip. And yeah, by informing the user with the best advice, um, we hope that they uh, follow up. Um, and all this is not nothing really revolutionary in itself, but it's proven successful when it comes to reaching out to individuals, um, uh, yeah, to, to those individuals. Um, next slide, please. Which already brings us to the, some of the brand makers highlights in the, in the Socrates project. Um, to start with, uh, as a young and innovative company, we knew that we would be able to add new things to the international smart mobility toolbox. So for brand makers as a uh, non-typical service provider, it was already a highlight to join and to contribute to Socrates 2.0. Another important highlight um, from a brand maker's perspective is to see that our service is very scalable. Uh, it has a feasible business case. It leads to measurable effects and it is trusted and valued by our users. And then to conclude with a uh, final brand maker's learning, uh, one that I hope that will be remembered is uh, it's actually an advice that we would like to give to European road authorities, and that is to think outside the typical and use the full potential of future interactive traffic management services. And remember that the way to your road users' time, attention, and trust may very well go via social media. Thank you for your attention. Um, now I will pass on the word to Jan again. Yes, thank you, Art. Uh, so now we come to, uh, to the learnings, to the summary of it. Um, next slide, please. Uh, so here you see the main findings of the, uh, the conclusions of the service providers that were presented before. Uh, you see quite some overlap of the findings between the different service providers. And these actually come down to three main topics. Next slide, please. You see cooperation, scalability, and win-win-win here. These are all interlinked. One would not be as successful uh, without the other. Uh, the corporation worked well between road authorities and the service providers. Uh, furthermore, the end users appreciated the end user services. As long as the solutions are scalable, it is easier and more attractive for service providers to be part of an organization like this and are willing to invest in it. However, there are still quite some challenges in this concerning standardization and the business model. Even though we have found benefit for each of the groups, so the road authorities, the service providers, and the end users. And so the different services together win, 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 and for everybody is not crystal clear yet. Uh, these challenges need to be sorted out to create that, uh, that situation for everyone. Uh, but all in all, the partners have found for this to be a valuable experience on which can be built towards the future. Uh, that's it for uh, the presentation uh, for now. Uh, I heard we've got a question from uh, Yip Temink. Um, are the probable uh, congested links preset or are they uh, dynamically chosen? I think that uh, goes for, um, for Amsterdam. Uh, so for Amsterdam, we have uh, a predetermined network uh, on which uh, the service uh, requests are being sent. Uh, the reason for that is because the network manager uh, who sends out the service request needs a network to uh, to operate on. Uh, and right now, the, the problem, it's not possible to do the entire world or the entire region of Amsterdam with all the, the, the small roads in there as well. So we've chosen a predefined network with the, the main, uh, main roads in Amsterdam. Um, does yeah, anybody... Maybe. Uh, maybe Jan, I can uh, quickly add to that, uh, that indeed the, the network is predefined, uh, but we, as a service provider, we never know beforehand uh, which links uh, will be subject of the service request. Right? So we cannot predict ourselves uh, what service requests will come in. Uh, and so our routing engine uh, needs to be uh, dynamically uh, and it needs to be needs to be fit to uh, to handle these requests dynamically. Um, so that is that is one of the yeah more 
complex uh, things that, that uh, our routing engines needed to do here in this case. Thank you, uh, Isaac. Um, this is all the time we have for now. Uh, if you have any other questions, you can meet us uh, later uh, after the conference in the online Socrates uh, Cafe. Uh, and for now, I would like to uh, invite you all back to the, to the plenary, uh, plenary session. Uh, starts again at uh, a quarter past uh, four. Or feel free to join the end of uh, another breakout session if it's still uh, going on. Thanks.